I'm a complete idiot and 34 days ago I decided to set myself the challenge of growing my I rating from a pathetic 2088 to a glorious 5000. If successful, ranking me amongst the top 1.5% of all iRacers on the iRacing service. This video is a regrettable documentation of the subsequent 344 hours and 15 minutes of suffering that then followed. Now for those of you lucky enough to be unfamiliar with sim racing, iRacing's rating system, iRating, is the premier way for sim racers to add validity to their subjective views on which racing simulator and racing simulation hardware is better or worse. Not only this, but iRating directly correlates the size of one's EPIN and thus the entirety of a person's self-worth within the world of sim racing. So for me, as a well-respected sim racing content producer, the importance of iRating cannot be understated. Now right away, it is worth me saying that obviously, maintaining 5000 plus iRating across multiple series over a long period of time is very different and much harder than just getting to 5000 iRating in the first place, and is something that only the saddest and most deprived of humans will ever achieve. However, for me, as someone that is almost imperceptibly critical of iRacing, and with iRacing being the simulator that I find the least intuitive to drive, just getting to 5000 iRating by any means possible would be a challenge of epic proportions. Now, if one was trying to gain iRating as quickly as possible, on the roadside, the key would be to drive in a series where you are unlikely to get a DQ from contacts, and a series where one could leverage their pace in qualifying to beat a large number of the grid before the race even started. Additionally, a series with higher rated splits would also really help, as that way you don't need to finish as high up to still gain rating which would make the various GT3 series available on iRacing an absolutely perfect choice, in fact the most logical choice and most sensible choice. Being the intelligent person that I am, I thus completely ignored GT3 and we decided to go straight to F4, the hellhole of iRacing racecraft and land of pure banditry, with the added bonus that the cars spontaneously combust from the slightest of tickles. Luckily though, for the first week F4 was at Alton Park, undisputably one of the greatest tracks in the world, and after just 4 days of racing for 10 hours a day, we were soon up to a glorious 3,400 I rating. Incredible progress, with it looking like we might finish the challenge by the end of the week. That is textbook. Get in there. That was pretty good. <laughs> what a move! Nice driving. You won. Monday then came around, and along with it, iRacing's weekly change of track, with the F4 cars to be racing at Road America. Now, I really like Road America, I'd probably put it in my top 10 tracks. Unfortunately, as I was to find out, Road America is positively the worst track to drive the F4 cars at. Ironically, the car is perfectly fine at Road America with the F4 car flowing through the corners and really just being a joy to drive through the circuit. Where the F4 breaks down at Road America, however, is that due to how fast and relatively easy Road America is to drive with the car, there is a huge amount of drafting. This drafting then combined with long sweeping corners allows some of the worst drivers in iRacing to keep with you for the first lap or two and then inevitably bin you when you get to the one tight corner on the circuit. There is no way to escape them and unfortunately there is no way for the track to take them out. 
and if they do crash, due to the nature of the corner radiuses in Road America, they tend to crash into the circuit in a way that the whole grid will then pile into them, making things completely unavoidable and an absolute disaster. And unlike Alton Park, there aren't really that many tight, windy corners to really lose a car or opportunities for the track itself to cause lower skilled drivers to then crash themselves off the track and out of the way. Stay on the right. Come my arm. Oh, <laughs> where did that even come from? Needless to say, we would gain 60i rating in three races only to then lose ATI rating from a completely unavoidable crash, removing all gains in I rating and 20 more. Which meant that despite our initial glorious progress, which we'd actually got up to 3,600 on Road America, we soon had a run of bad races, four in a row, uh, DQs, which then dropped us down to an emaciated 3,000 I rating. Keep in mind that we had spent many, many hours, over 100 hours, working the I rating up. So to have the I rating predominantly in a single day just be eradicated through no fault of our own was slightly demotivating. Of course though, due to being an overly positive person, this didn't affect me in the slightest, as can be seen from the stream titles and constantly upbeat attitude displayed whilst taking part in these races. Needless to say, the sheer inconsistency of the F4 races made the car track combo of Road America and the F4 car utterly futile as a place to gain rating. So we decided that we desperately needed a change. So we experimented with a few different cars and first of all we tried the Skippy which was racing at Long Beach and we did gain a little bit of rating but having driven the Skippy a lot in the past I decided that I wanted to do something else. Uh, something more exciting, something more powerful, something more sexy. And there it was, all along, hiding like an F1 driver's bank account in Monaco, the Toyota GR86. Now, of course, nobody in the live stream chat told me multiple times for multiple days that I should try this car. And of course, I didn't ignore people because I'm actually very attentive and not stubborn in the slightest. But here it was, a car in iRacing that actually drives like a car. And even better, it was racing at Road America, a track that we had now learned to a pretty high level with the uh, F4 car. Now, there's still a great deal of suffering and learning of how to get the most out of the Toyota GR86, but once it clicked, we were getting really good race result after good race result. I rating was increasing and things were so good that we even started to remix iRacing's always angelic and pleasant voice chat into banging dance tunes with hits being produced such as Inside Outside and Too Wide. Things then got even more emotional when none other than the legend himself, Matt Malone, started to join races with us. It's Matt Malone in the server, here we go! Giving us multiple bottom tickles and waving his shiny trombone like an out of control firework on the 4th of July. Fine. Despite having a hardware issue causing me to have to replace the wheel rim whilst driving, which may or may not have killed a subscriber of the channel. <laughs> my, my gears! No, my gears are broken! No! No! Don't go on the track! Sorry, I sorry. I saved, survived the crash, and my gear, my wheel stopped working. <laughs> 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 
and we may have also have done a few questionable overtakes, but putting that to one side, after four days of Road America with the Toyota consistently finishing in the top four or so, we had managed to grow our EPIN to a phenomenal, exciting, incredibly turgid 4K. Absolutely beautiful. Which, quite frankly, made the goal of achieving 5K look almost inevitable. But then, out of the blue, to increase the stakes further, none other than the turn left driving, milk drinking and eye racing legend, Tony Kanan jumped into the live stream with some pure psychological warfare. Tony offered to send us a signed Tony Kanan edition GSI wheel should we succeed in managing the glory of achieving 5000 I rating. Glory was so close in my mind, yet in reality, very, very distant. Optimistic and ready to succeed 11 days in and brain damaged from driving the Toyota at Road America for far too long, again, we needed a change. So I swapped over to the Mazda MX-5 for some racing at Laguna Seca, which despite having uh, drivers in that series with the race craft of rabid chimpanzees, through raw pace alone and the implementation of the recently invented Schmidt flick, as well as the discovery of using auto blip instead of anti-stall clutch, we were able to get our rating all the way to 4,400. A new height, it was like being on top of the Eiffel Tower of I rating. But as the I rating increased, so did the difficulty, simply due to the fact of how I racing's I rating ELO system works, in that the higher your rating is, the harder it is to gain more rating. Mostly because if you're the highest rated driver in the race, then you can't steal that much rating from other people. You're just going to get a small percentage of those lower rated drivers. It was getting difficult. And uh, that's, when, that's when the disaster happened. iRacing strategically implemented week 13 which I could only interpret as a direct plan attack from iRacing HQ on trying to scupper my iRating challenge. Now, if you don't know, week 13 is when iRacing updates the simulator, normally with their new, 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 new tyre model and changes that most people probably wouldn't even notice. During week 13, only a few official series run, Porsche Cup, Fix Ferrari, and the MX-5, and those races in week 13 are generally of the same quality as your average Wreckfest game. The sensible thing to do would have been for me to take a week's break and uh, then come back relaxed, refreshed and ready to race when iRacing service was back to normal. Of course, I didn't take a break and I loaded straight into the MX-5 again for some wonderful week 13 races and predictably this was a terrible idea. That's not to say we didn't gain I rating on some days, however every day of gains would then be met by an entire day of losses. Keep in mind on week 13 there's a new track every single day. so. You really can't leverage your knowledge of a track or what you'd get by putting more time into it. It was literally do races every 30 minutes, see what you could get from them and most of the time feel bad about yourself. Also, once you've got to 4,500i rating, you really have to finish in the top four or so to gain any sort of rating and typically then, if the strength of field isn't particularly high, you will only gain 15 to 20 or so I rating, but a single DQ will easily lose you 80 to 120 I rating. So the stakes are really stacked against you. The great takeaway and big positive of getting to the end of week 13 was that I'd fully embraced the futility of I racing 
and any notion that iRacers know how to drive cars. This mental clarity had the added benefit of now making me a Zen Buddhist master, and I can now boil my kettle without the use of electricity, so week 13 was not a complete loss. Maybe to my sanity, but other than that it was not a complete loss. Furthermore, despite the ups and mostly downs, down specifically to 3800i rating of week 13, I did learn Virginia International Raceway, which was fantastic as the F4 car was due to be there for the first week of the next season. And unlike Road America, VIR has enough corners to eliminate the two lap and die hot lap drivers that made Road America the disaster that it was in the F4 car. So it was now day 26 with over 200 hours, dear God, of live streaming. Um, I had entirely lost my grip on reality and was also suffering from knee and shoulder pain. To be honest, my house being hit by a meteor would have quite frankly been a reprieve at this point in time. But digging deep, all that mattered now was getting within a few tenths of the top pace at VIR in the F4 car so we could consistently qualify in the top six or so places and then on average finish races in the top five or better. One of the biggest lessons of this challenge was that iRacing is effectively a hot lap simulator. Now, to be clear, obviously hot lapping and being fast is good in all sims and indeed also real life. But when you combine iRacing's explosive ghost contact netcode and tyres that turn off over the limit along with completely randomised damage, not racing people and simply being faster before the race starts is by far the most important thing to do if your goal is success in iRating. Which is a real shame, as my pace is always better in races than it is in qualifying. But at least we had cracked the iRacing Da Vinci code. I not racing. That is the real name of the sim. Uh, they just hide it really well. After six days of driving VIR and also accidentally drinking mouldy water, it's literally got mould in it. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> thought it was fresh but it's been there for like three days i was now able to see the future with me being able to predict when and where other drivers would crash to a somewhat scary degree of ability yeah they probably crash on the hill so i would say driving vir for six days in their four car is possibly one of the worst things a person could spend their limited time on earth doing. However, everything was in fact justified by the fact that during this VIR period of despair, we created one of our best banging voice tunes yet, Son of the Beach. A song that with few words manages to sum up the reality of playing iRacing almost too perfectly. So another week had passed and we were now at 4,550i rating, the highest we had ever achieved. It was with this and the real possibility of dying from old age doing this challenge that I decided to make a risky decision. And that was to again switch car, this time to one of the new cars recently added to iRacing, the Formula Ford. Fortunately, the Formula Ford is a nice nippy car and oddly suited to my style of overdriving and then dialing things back, a quality that's uh, very rare with iRacing content. Uh, 
Even more fortunately, the Formula Ford was running at Donington, a track that I know well, both in real life and in simulator land. This was it. The make or break moment. Everything hinged on this car or track. And when I say everything, I literally mean everything. After this amount of live streaming and playing iRacing, I was genuinely not even joking. We, I was losing it. I still lost it. I don't think I'm ever going to get it back. Ball again. Now she's pretty big. Oh, she's huge. She's massive. No, she's tiny. She's huge. She's tiny. She's huge. She's tiny. Oh, she's tiny. She's tiny. No, she's she's bigger than the whole track. Here she comes dancing away around the corner. Now, the first day of racing in the Formula Ford was pretty arduous with me needing to learn some rather interesting and totally legal track cuts. And uh, the fact that the Formula Ford car also has suspension that's utterly impervious to outright sausage abuse. Um, more impervious to sausage abuse than Matt Malone, some have rumoured. Uh, but I can't confirm or deny that. But I think that's probably true. Once we were up to pace, though, it was simply a case of applying, in my mind, what was very basic racecraft. But racecraft that uh, apparently was well outside the bounds of the vast majority of drivers racing in the Formula Ford series. It turns out you can actually distill many iRacers' racecraft with a beautifully simple equation. If gap equals send car. Fortunately, the uh, if gap send car crowd tend to wreck themselves and innocent people before the end of the race, allowing me to move over and basically deploy them like a Mario Kart red shell, further reducing my odds of a DQ and also massively increasing my I rating gains per race. So once we embrace the philosophy of I not racing, everything comes into uh, clarity when it comes to I racing. Furthermore, after three days of Donington, we were setting absolute laser beam lap times, only a few tenths off the world record pace. I had indeed become again. one with the misery and Stockholm syndrome of eye racing. I was genuinely feeling like a proper eye racer. A combination of hot lapping, ultra passive driving, avoiding the limit at all costs, and occasionally wrecking people in the server when eye racing staff were also in the race. And then, in no time at all, it was time. Time for the 5k race. The final race in order for us to hit 5k. And. I squirted! Oh, <laughs> no! I, I wrecked on the first corner. And then it finally came. This was it. The 5k race. With raids from other trapped iRacers and Twitch streamers, we had literally hundreds of people watching. Waiting to see if the pathetic, low-skilled, follically challenged, tea-drinking moron could realise the dream. A dream that surely was never meant to happen. Green, green, green. We're off. Oh, God, these Australians with laggy cars. <laughs> this is the worst, the worst situation here. We've got a whole grid of Australians. The car's wobbling all over the place. Oh my god. Welcome to Wobble Wars. Oh my god, car behind almost taking this out. This is what the world's like for Daniel Gray. <laughs> Wobbly Australians. Guys, go and follow Daniel Gray if you haven't. He's an absolute legend. He's still looking for his didgeridoo. Ah! Oh! 
cuida. That was close. That was close. Christ almighty, car up the arse there. Car up the arse. My god. My god. Let's concentrate here. In fact, he's done a good job defending. Nothing I can do, really. Literally, all we need is 11 I rating, guys. <laughs> 11 is all we need. Come on, Warwick, catch up with this group. not lose a draft. Come on. Oh, the car's doing a backflip in front. He's not helping. Oh, they might crash. They're getting feisty. Houston. Oh! What are you doing, mate? I've got too used to driving in front with fresh air. This is throwing me off. Still in the draft. Go right. Oh. Here we go. Don't do the send on me. Don't do the send on me. Don't do the send on me. Thank you. Come on. 
You're in fourth position. Right side. No, stop Keep driving into me. I've got car in front Come on. crashing. Clear on the right. Shit the bed. Oh my god. He's trying to kill me. It's your car literally crashing in front and he's sending it up the inside. What's he doing? Still there. Still there. Oh, he's lost Clear. it. He's lost it. I don't know why people try and go around the outside there. What on earth was he doing? Oh, my God. <laughs> what was he doing? Six laps to go. Cars in front look like they might wreck. The yellow car's all over the red car, like a lunatic. Thanks for that. <laughs> oh, come on, these guys are absolutely battling. We gotta get a podium. Come on, we can't we can't not finish on a podium. Let's go. the fight of their lives I'm getting their draft that's ideal Of course we have a lagger in front of us. Doing wheelies, playing Tony Hawk's Pro Formula Ford. Oh, we're in the draft, here we go. THPFF. <laughs> oh, what's he slowing down for? What's he doing? We need a bit of Church of Force feedback here.
got me, we got me. We just don't need it. We don't need that. <laughs> Why? Why in this race? Why? Just like that, Mr. West is oh in the top three. Oh my God. <laughs> so close. Oh, come on, we're finished on a podium. Oh my God. Why is this guy drifting? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Why are you drifting every corner? Why is this guy always sideways? Does he know that you don't need to drift entry every corner? Guess that's the new racing line, fair enough. Car on your left. Still there. Clear on the left. Car on your left. Keep to the right. Hello. Still there. Hold your line. Clear.
It's more fun racing people with a bad ping. on your left. Clear on the left. Holy shit, he was going to drive into us. He, he, he was 100% just going to drive into us there. He did not leave any room at all if you I actually kept going. Left. Emery in chat, by the way, guys. Go and follow Emery. Awesome streamer. Woo. Final lap, I think. Coming up. Woo! You just got the white flag. That means one more lap to go. Right side. Keep to the left. Clear on the right. Off the road. Okay. Right side. Go left. Oh, you Clear. idiot. Oh. Clear. Oh. You fucking moron. <laughs> fucking eye racers. <laughs> what? I even moved out of the way. We're going to finish. We're finished and the wheel's coming off. Oh, my God. <laughs> We're beating him. We're beating him! Get out of the way, you shit! Oh, fuck. What is he doing? Oh my god! Yes! Go! Guys, first foul you get to 5k with three wheels. <laughs> that race, that race, that was just your typical eye racing race. I am the champion of the ninja. Oh no. Oh my god, that was the worst race in the history of eye racing.
<laughs> so there we have it. We're now at 5,000 I rating, putting us in the top 1.5% of I racers. Uh, amazing. The moment that I actually ticked over to 5,000, I was able to levitate. So uh, I, I could totally understand why people spend so much time playing iRacing. And also, now I really can't wait for anything I say to be uh, vindicated by default due to having a number of a certain value in a specific simulator. Oh, amazing. Totally worth the 34 days, 350 hours or so of live streaming. My God. I have to say a monumental Statue of Liberty, Eiffel Tower, Big Ben thank you to everyone that watched and supported. Uh, I, I can't believe if the, the amount of mental damage I have from doing this. I can't believe how much you guys have subjected yourselves to uh, lower IQ by, by watching. And even uh, some of you joined in with the races as well. Uh, all of you guys that j just watched it was amazing, but also the people that became members on Twitch and um, sent us donations and all this, like all this support, uh, making it possible. Uh, just crazy. You guys need to speak to an accountant, and uh, you need to cancel your bank cards because there's clearly something wrong with you. But uh, outside of the viewers, uh, Matt Malone with the raids and uh, his encouragement as well was incredible. Apparently, he had us on his big screen, the, subjecting his wife and uh, children to game of muscle i don't recommend doing that uh, the child protection services we come around his house uh, daniel gray for the support as well loads of raids uh, from australia uh, he's still not found his didgeridoo emil bernstoff what a what a crazy legend of a guy with the best curtains oh love 46 I, i'm gonna miss out names uh, tony canard oh, all, all you guys that are on twitch and just the general sim racing people that encouraged us to continue wasting our lives Thank you very much. But of course, the biggest thank you has to go to the super dedicated uh, Game of Muscle haters that were always waiting in chat. Uh, I don't know what they're doing with their lives for when we'd make a mistake or there'd be a crash to tell us exactly what we did wrong. Uh, that was absolutely fantastic dedication. I, 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 the, the, the hate dedication is amazing and one of the greatest things about the internet. So thank you to all of you. Uh, for, for all of that, but uh, that is it, guys. That That is it. That is 5,000 I rated. Um, I'm going to go outside. Um, I've not I've not seen the sky properly. I've been to Lidl's a few times. We're going to go outside and uh, experience a bit of life. Um, I will do some follow-up videos where we talk about the damage that sim racing for so long does to you and the stuff that we've learned, the hyper-specific, ultra-mega nerdy stuff we've learned about iRacing after doing this challenge. But uh, until then, thank you for watching this video. Thank you for liking and subscribing. Crucially, this is tea. <laughs> Make yourselves a cup of tea. Happy tea drinking. And goodbye, everyone.